Hello all, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Today I want to talk a little bit about fertilizers. Now it's not just your normal run of the mill, me talking crap in a video type thing, but this is aquatic fertilizers. Getting plenty of tanks going. Um, I've spent the best part of a year now trying to get my head around this. I've never been a planted guy person. I've never really understood where it's going, but I've been trying my hardest to learn it all. I've been trying product after product after product after product, trying to get there. And I'm starting to form my conclusions. So I just thought I'd share them with you and hopefully you can help me out and maybe some of this will help you out. Where to start? I guess it's probably easiest to start talking about my motives. Obviously, everyone wants lovely planted tanks with good, healthy, lush growth and everything doing really well. Um, so we'll, we'll use that as a baseline. Everybody wants that. I wasn't too concerned about how quickly everything would grow. I just wanted everything to look good. I also wanted it to be easy. I didn't want to have to spend my life doing mathematical calculations and getting syringes out and doing all kinds of stuff like this just to get the, the dosage right. I didn't want it to be expensive because who wants to spend an absolute fortune um, just looking after their, their plants? Uh, and obviously I wanted it to work. So I was looking for an all-in-one because that seemed to be the, the sensible place to start. So I'm thinking that the, the all-in-one's the way to go because then I don't have to mess around with individual um, syringes getting so much of one and another and it just gets too much to you. I want something where once a week or even if it has to be daily, it has to be daily, I can just come along, dod a little bit in a tank, away we go, everything's happy. I'm starting to find that I might be there now. And the reason I think this is so hard for everyone is because you you design an all-in-one fertilizer but no one's got an all-in-one tank so one tank might be heavily planted but lowly stocked the next one might have low stock but no plants either or anything in between they might have differences in hardness uh, acidity light levels all kinds of these things which all have a bearing on what a fertilizer will do so as much as the the bump you read on any of these products uh, websites are back about how they're the complete answer to everything. Nothing can be that until you try it and find a way to use it. And the way that I was getting the best results was by taking a, a longer approach to it and figuring out, okay, this says you have to dose two mils a day at a certain time and do this, that and the other. Maybe that's not quite right and that's not quite what will do it for me. Um, and I'll be perfectly honest, the thing that did it for me was the Aquarian Co-op. They talk about um, his, Corey's Easy Green solution. I thought, that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. I want something that can do that. I come along, I squirt into my tank, job done. I don't want to have to come along, measure out an impossible measurement into a cup or get a syringe and start messing about with that. It's just not my style, I guess. So, if you learn nothing else from this, the one thing I can recommend is grabbing something like this, a bottle off of eBay or Amazon or really well wash out some kind of bottle. Um, you get them with different pumps. I would recommend that you use a dark colour because I have used a clear colour and it seemed to affect, if I didn't store it in a dark place, it seemed to affect the, the solution. And you will notice that most of these things come in non-clear transparent containers. So for instance, if you have decided that Evolution Aquas, the Aquascaper is the stuff for you, rather than messing about with it in here, get one of these, transport that into that. This particular pump, this is a two and a half mil pump. So I know every time I do this, that's two and a half milliliters going into my tank. You can buy different ones. I wouldn't go any smaller than this because when I tried smaller pumps, they got clogged very easily, uh, whereas this seems to do the trick all the time. So that's my first tip, but stay tuned, we will have more. That's if you've got one, you're happy with it, whether it's this, whether it's Profita, whether it's TNC Complete, whatever it is, that's one cheap hack, if you like, to um, speed up things and make your life a little bit easier. The next thing I got after this was trying to figure out a little bit more about all these things. So like I'm just grabbing these because these are closest, but we've got various other ones around that I've tried over the last year or so. The majority of your complete foods 
aren't complete foods because they all miss something or they all have something extra that the other one doesn't have. For instance, these two. This one, very little, if any, nitrates or nitrogenous stuff in it. This one, loads. Um, so you think these are both marketed as complete foods. Um, what else would you need? Normally they will leave out things like iron or phosphates or things because these are things that you need trace elements for. And if you were to put them in a complete food, I guess they, that might dose too much of something at one time possibly, or it's just the case that you don't always need those extra bits. So you don't always need to dose iron and you don't need to dose it as often as you might need to dose potassium or manganese or any of the other ones. Um, so quite often you'll see products like this that will be sold with something separate, a, a potassium product or an iron product. So my second tip is this thing here, which I'm hoping that in post-production I can go away and grab an image here which shows you it. But it's learning to read the plant deficiencies. Uh, learning that um, new leaves being yellower than the old ones means you've got an iron deficiency. Learning that what holes in your leaves means. Learning that um, stringy long stems mean one thing, whereas short bushy plants means another thing. Because if you can learn exactly where your plants are struggling, that gives you a much better chance at deciding whether you want something that's high in nitrogen or low in nitrogen. And, and often you can work it out for yourself by thinking, right, I've got a tank that is very heavily stocked, so I probably don't need extra nitrogen. Although if your tank is very sparsely stocked, then you probably are going to need to dose that a bit more, otherwise you're going to get deficiencies. So if you get something like this and you learn what your plants are doing and how they're growing, and you know what they need, that then lets you make a better decision on one of these things. And that can be um, the case of something like this can be throwing your money, good money after bad, because it's never going to do exactly what your tank needs. And it can also mean that if this is the right thing for you and you, the, you work out the right dosage that works for you, you can make this go a lot longer than it's meant to, or this or an other product. So that's my second tip, is to try and figure out what it is that's needed. The third tip is, and again, this is 100% stolen off Corey at Aquarium Co-op, um, it's looking at trying to make my own solution. So this is great. I have different tanks here, you might have seen me talking about them before. I've got some that are heavily planted, some that aren't, some that are heavily stocked, some that aren't. So I probably do want something that's got nitrogen one day and then something that hasn't for another tank. And I don't want to be carrying all these different bottles out. So I was looking for something that maybe I can use a solution that I can make myself and keep it in a bottle like this and it's one squirt for one tank and it's two squirts for another tank depending on the requirements of that tank. So that's why I started to look into dry ferts and the estimative index method where you look at the individual elements that make up all these fertilizers because it's all the same stuff and you make your own concoction and you buy them as dry goods and you mix them with some RO water you store them in a bottle like this and you use them as required. It's not a perfect science because like I say, sometimes you want to keep some things out and separate like your iron or your potassium. You might not want to put that in your all in one. And sometimes it's not quite as easy as one squirt for one tank, two squirts for another tank. So this is very much something you need to go and try for yourself. Uh, I'm still working this out myself. Um, but is this third tip, fourth tip? Whatever. It's a thing like this. Now this is called Lush Max. I found this on eBay fairly recently. Um, this is in effect someone else that's gone out and done the homework on the dry ferts to figure out what it is that you need uh, in order to create a fairly balanced, fairly well put together, complete plant food. Now this bag for instance, uh, this makes up a litre of a solution that under general use a couple of squirts of these a week would do me brilliantly and would do most folk. So that's a litre that's going, these are half litre bottles. And this goes maybe four times as far as those ones do when it's made up as a solution. Uh, and it costs less as well. So you can see the kind of price per litre or price per plant or however you want to measure it. It's going to go pretty far on this. And the only way you're going to go further than this is sourcing your own copy of the dry ferts and making your own mix. 
and I got a two pack bag of these I think for about eight or nine pounds I think it was from eBay and um, used the other one this one um, I just this is the one I've not quite got round to using yet it's great I'm getting great results from it um, it also seems to fit in with the way that I want to do things which is try and get as close as possible to me knowing a tank requires two or three pumps one pump three pumps rather than it's by water volume or whatever it is because it is a complete food it does have most trace elements put in there and I know that the only things I might have deficiencies for I can then go and dose monthly or weekly if it needs it or whatever it may be so I haven't got any of the dry ferrets on me because they're all downstairs but I'll show you them in a minute um, but they're an even cheaper way to make this and this stuff here when you look at this in comparison to uh, the likes of Aquarium Co-op's Easy Green it's almost chemically identical the, the percentages of the various trace and or macro and micronutrients that make up this kind of thing are the same that they print on the back of their bottle so I'm sure it's a bit more nuanced than that but that is a great way to get a great product that you can tailor for the way that you use it uh, and this stuff I mean I'm so impressed with this I'm, I'm now showing you an empty bottle because that's all downstairs but you don't need to see the bottle to know that it works uh, it just makes it so much easier keeping this down in the fish room pump 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 go around the tanks that require it double pump in the ones that do uh, need a bit more and I seem to be getting good enough results I've, I've used other tanks to go as far as possible the other way to see what goes wrong when you overdose things or hence this one being a bit algae mental at the moment um, so I've still got a long way to go before I can sit in front of the camera and tell you all that I'm now an expert in this and this is definitely the way to go and this is something that you should do and I'm going to start selling this with Brandy's Aquarium Adventure Bottles um, so I just thought I'd share with you some of the tips that I've learned on the way here hopefully you'll be able to save a few pennies and you might get a little bit better growth out of your plants but the real reason is I want you to help me I want you to let me know in the comments what kind of things should I be testing next what have I not considered I've kind of gone through all the, the kind of brand names um, of uh, fertilizers that you can get on the market and I've tried all of them I've started dabbling in the EI world of the dry ferts I'm not interested in going the whole way down that road I'm more interested in creating my own version of this and getting something that I'm happy with and I think I've actually got it um, but what else could I be doing? What, sh what am I missing? What am I not considering? What am I not thinking about? Um, let me know in the comments what you think to some of those things. And as always, if any of this is useful, let me know if that's useful as well. Um, this thing, brilliant. I don't know why nobody's thought of this other than Corey from Aquarium Advent. Oh, Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Because as far as I'm concerned, all mass-produced fertilizers should come with this pump system. Um, I've been using this one in particular for a couple of months. Um, no clogs, no problems, no jams, uses it right down to the bottom, it doesn't go funny, doesn't start to smell, the material's good and such sturdy, yeah great stuff, but let me know what you think, is any of this any use to you, and even if it isn't, give me a subscribe anyway, we're almost at 5,000 subscribers, I kind of want to go over that hump uh, as soon as I can, uh, but as always, thank you for watching, hope it's been of some use to you, and I'll catch you next time.